Push up. Push up. Record it. Awesome. So I'd like everyone to introduce themselves where they come from, uh, what they will be doing at African River, and then we can take it from. So Mensa, let us start. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Maza Haragoy and I am from Ethiopia and I have graduated with a bachelor degree of architecture and yeah. I have been accepted to be a content and graphics uh, specialist at African Rebirth. Nice meeting you all. Thank you, Maza, Maza, Maza. All right, Noel. Yeah, your time. Hi, everyone. Hello. It's, it's, it's evening in Kenya, so good evening. If it's evening, good afternoon from wherever you are. Yeah, my name is Noel Omoko. I work as an administrator. That is my daily job. But after, at African Rebirth, I've been admitted as an excellence director. And it's a pleasure to meet you all. And I hope we work well to the goal, to achieve the goal of African Rebirth. Thank you very much. And pleasure meeting all of you. Asante uh, sana. Uh, Mohammed. Hello, Mr. Rock. Hey, Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum. Uh -huh. uh, I am Muhammad from Egypt and, and economics studies uh, faculty uh, from Venezuela University. I have accepted, I have accepted, I have been accepted uh, uh, of research and innovation specialist. specialist. Sam, thanks, Muhammad. Uh, who else? Lant? Lant, Manana? Um, evening, everyone. My name is Lant Kobego Lutebusha Manana from Eswatim. Um, I studied uh, governance and regional integration and I've been accepted under research. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. William. Uh, sorry, I joined a bit late, but- uh, Oh, you're I just think. introducing ourselves, where you come from, um, what uh, you're going to do, basically that. Where you come from, what you're going to do. All right, my name is Velem Salomo. I'm from Namibia and I'm uh, studying procurement and supply chain at the University of Namibia Science and Technology, and I've been accepted as a uh, diplomatic affairs director. Thanks, uh, William. Um, Sandra. Sandra? Sandra, are you there? All right, we'll go. Yeah, see you on. Hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Yom, and I'm from Ethiopia. And uh, I'm a software engineer. Currently, I'm working as a graphic designer and mobile app developer. Uh, that's me. Thank you. Uh, Zuwa. Hi, everyone. My apologies, I can't switch my camera on right now, but uh, my name is Zua. I'm from Zimbabwe, and uh, currently I'm studying actuarial science, and I'm in my third year of university. Okay. Um, Sandra, are you there? No? Okay, I will just go ahead. So thanks everyone and I hope 
everyone introduced themselves and everyone knows. Um, at least they know each other. Now at least we know each other. So we forge your way out. So we'll start kickstart today. Um, I'll share my screen. So people may not know a uh, lot what's uh, African rebirth or about. So I thought we should be uh, was fair enough to explain our expectations and also you know learn more about African rebirth, why African rebirth for sure. So we have a few slides that will be very quick, but to the point. Uh, introduction, what is African rebirth? Why African rebirth? You know, everything has a philosophy, why it exists. So we analyzed before we even started African rebirth, we found out that this is our philosophical statement that we found out that in the history of mankind, no society has progressed to the highest form of development and civilization without peace and unity. And that's why African, at African rebirth, we aspire on, on three principles, that is peace, unity, and prosperity. So without peace, without unity, there is no development, or there is, you can't achieve development to the highest form of civilization. And it's, uh, and when you look, analyze all the empires in the world, they, they, they prospered, they, they grew, they, you know, they conquered because they were peaceful, they were united and they were prosperous, you know? And they are prosperous in terms of political might and economic might. Uh, but you, when you see the weaker states, they, are, they can't conquer, they can't do anything. So um, there's nothing. And to be prosperous and be strong, we must have peace stability at home. Right now, Ukraine cannot wage a war on another country, or you know, because they're in a war anyway. So they must have peace. Right now, there is no a billionaire or investment uh, specialist who could put their money in Ukraine because there is a war going on there. Right now, even the business is established. They are destroyed, you know, big complex buildings, they are down now. So peace is a very essential part. But what brings peace, there are many forms uh, that brings peace. Uh, what brings peace, what sustains peace, what inspires peace. And that's what African Rebirth was created to seek those answers that is still in them. Yeah. So but Africa, this is the light at the end of the tunnel. Despite the ravaged walls, thinic violence, mediocrity, we still have a mandate and we have a responsibility to cast a vote of peace and unity and prosperity. That's why we, we exist. And everything you hear about here is about unifying prosperity, excellence. It's because we want to break the mindset the perpetual mindset of mediocrity, of underdevelopment, of diseases, of poverty, uh, of, of the lavish continent. So we want to go for it for sure. And so comes African rebirth now. That's a philosophical statement. Now comes what is African rebirth. Our mission is very clear, and I want everyone to understand this, that our mission is not my, my mission or anyone's mission, it's an African mission. So you, so you too. So our mission is to defy mediocrity, inspire and empower young African leaders who seek peace, unity and prosperity. Mediocrity is very essential here. You know, let me highlight it actually. Oh. Mediocrity, inspiring, mediocrity, very, very, very essential. So mediocrity, what's mediocrity? It's average, performing under your potential. Um, you know, you're supposed to be an A student, but you're crushing in uh, E's, B's, F's. And so when you 
take it to Africa, we are rich. Statistical wise, um, physical wise, we a big continent. We have the best mineral resources in the world. But at the same time, there's a dilemma that we are still poor. So we are still poor because we have embraced mediocrity for too long. And I think it is really high time that we uh, we cut that red tape that has you know um, siphon our development, siphon innovation, siphon um, great minds to thrive at the environment. So we need to move ahead than ever before, and so that's why we and 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 the area of focus are young people because the young people are at, uh, at the future, at um, the present. And we are the majority. 80% of Africa's population is made up of young people. You know? So this is very, very important that we defy the mindset of mediocrity. Why can't we, the biggest continent, the richest continent, but again, the poorest continent? The two things doesn't make sense. You know, Our vision is a prosperous and united Africa. Our, our values, and that's why everyone, you hear a lot more about this leadership. Everything lies and falls on leadership. You show me a prosperous nation, I will tell you the quality of its leaders. You show me the, a poor performing society, it's a pure reflection of its leaders. You show me the, the progress of any society, it relies heavily on the quality of its leaders. So leadership is very key. Excellence. Excellence, excellence, excellence. We repeat this and this and more and more. Excellence, performance. There's no way you can define mediocrity if you're average, if you're not excellent, you know? There's no way you can say we want a new Africa, but without excellence, because we have gotten a lot of bad experiences anyway. So why can't we embrace a new outlook? Uh, excellence, diversity from the offset. Everyone here is from a different country, maybe a different religion. The power of Africa lies in embracing diversity. And diversity is not only, oh, I am from this tribe, or I'm from this country, but also diversity of ideas. You know, we have to embrace because it is through ideas that people embrace innovation, acceptance, tolerance. And when people embrace those factors, there is less conflict. You know, there is um, there is a lot of uh, collaboration instead of division. There is a lot of uh, innovation instead of uh, um, uh, people being stifled in uh, areas of uh, progressing. So, Pan Africanism. You know, Pan African. You can define it in any way you want according to how you understand it. Uh, this is our definition of Pan-Africanism. Prosperity. There is no Pan-Africanism without uh, a, a prosperous nation. Uh, we cannot be Pan-Africans. We cannot love too much uh, Pan-Africans in poverty. That's not true. I can't say, oh, I love this thing, but you are perpetually poor. Doesn't make sense. This is the 21st century where it's a century of progress. You know, it's a century of uh, innovation. It's a century of defying really the odds of society, and mountains, and reaching to the far, far reaching experiences. So it's very, very essential. Pan Africanism is embracing the unity of your neighbor. Pan Africanism is embracing the peace that we have uh, longed for, you know that we have really, uh, that is so important to our lives, that people have, you know, some of African countries have, every generation has seen war in at least some kind of violence, may not be a very big war, but some kind of violence. Now that's not a nation, you know, why can't we say there's no generation that will see war again? So, this is very important to our, to, to, to our values and to our mission. Our services, of course, accountability, unity, transformation, and prosperity. 
our values, our services, leadership, entrepreneurship, diplomacy, and peace building. Uh, those are four pillars that we embrace on. And as you'll be working with us, you will learn a lot more about this. We, we recruit people from all different African countries. We train them on those four principles for a period of six weeks. We have an ambassador's program where we have each young leader in African country representing uh, our services. Let me go to a culture. What is our culture? You know, different companies, and we also have a culture. We strive for, we strive, someone wrote some, oh, it's okay. We strive to work under innovation, not pressure. We want uh, people who embrace innovation, not pressure. So you have a room for innovation. You have like, it's an area where your wildest dreams can come true if you, if you have the courage to embrace them and bring them up. You won't be judged uh, either for dreaming big, you know, and also um, it's not like a regular work environment. We, we, we treasure more results than just rules and routines. So you have the best mind, so use it, you know, use it. You have you you have so skilled. Use it. So pressure. There is no pressure. No one is putting you under pressure. No. Uh, we value personal growth of our employees. What's personal growth? When people grow personally, they also uh, produce exceptional stuff. When the people don't grow uh, professionally or in a personal growth, their performance is also impacted. So we strive to make sure that our employees have room for growth and um, you know, explore more staff and opportunities. Everyone is a genius. Mm -hmm. Hence, everyone must be hard equal. Every one of you here, you're geniuses. So why can't your voice not be heard? No one will shut, up, will shut down your voice or your idea. So it's, it's up to you to bring it up and you'll be hard equal. Excellence, this is our DNA, you know? It's through this mindset that within a one year and a half that we've been operating since we started, we have all ambassadors represented in four or 45 countries. We have um, we've trained thousands of young, young leaders. We host high profile, high profile young, I mean, uh, statesmen. Uh, from politics, business, and civil society. One year, other organizations spend 10 years, four years, not, they have not even graduated from their community to another community, you know? That shows the power of innovation, but it's not us, it's the people we attract. It's people who, who do, it's, it's, uh, it's this principle, you know? Dream whatever you dream, bring your idea. It is this, this principle that we listen to the, the geniuses of young people that work with us, you know, you know, all those making those grand uh, connections uh, on, on our platform. So this is a place where all your ideas can be had. Acceptance and appreciation of diversity and ideology, identity, rest is very, very key because I am special because I'm different. You are special because you're different. But your difference should not be a, a sign of your hindrances or a weakness. It should be a strength, it should embrace it. And all organizations that embrace, even at a personal level, when you embrace diversity, you attract more friends, you, you grow your network, you get more ideas, you have a bigger market if you're a businessman. Even when you're a political leader, all people will come closer to you. Communication is key. And this is very important. Communicate, 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 communicate. Endless, please communicate. Communicate with your fellow. Communicate whatever you don't understand. Communicate how you feel about a certain idea. Communicate. Now, we, for example, show you an example. We are supposed to meet uh, 
we have an orientation. People here have not attended, but they have also not communicated. That century is over, you know? That century of coming like uh, a no man's land, you know, you can afford to come, cannot really come, no, no. As Africans, this mindset must be abolished forever. Communication, it shows responsibility, it shows that you, you, are, you, are, you are reliable, you know, it's not a matter of disappearing angels coming and go. You never know when they return or no, you know. No, communicate, communicate. It shows uh, progress in terms of organization, you know. So communication is very key. Please communicate, but you don't understand what you understand and also what you think should be done, you know. Uh, this is the way. And this is the way. At the end of the day, we care about results. It's not how you do it. We just care how you you perform it and nail it. So our nature of work, we work virtually. I'm happy to meet everyone virtually. I am talking to every African now virtually. We work virtually, you know, time zones. You, you, there are a lot of uh, time zones. Uh, me, I mean, in North America. So you're in Africa. There's some, even within Africa, there are some different time zones. So that requires some kind of flexibility in how we do. If you text your friend and it's about to sleep, hey, uh, take it easy. It's the, the world hasn't come on to be um, morning and then you'll be chatting or you know, following commitment, you know? So flexibility is, is, is important. But since it doesn't mean that, oh, since uh, we are very flexible, we can't meet deadlines. Those, that's not what I mean. Um, finish, we finish for what I have to do, regardless of what time is on. But I'm saying in terms of texting interaction and also, you know, we can understand, okay, if it is day here, it's night over there. So if we have a colleague, why can't we, you know, teamwork around work it out? So the duration of a commitment, this is a maximum of six month opportunity, but with extension, person, passion and excess performance. Definitely, you can't, if someone say, I wanna do this, I wanna stay here and I feel this, this is my calling or passion. We can't chase you away, never. However, we give one month of probation period uh, and which you, you don't need extreme performance that we expect. When you lower our expectations and you lower your expectation too, we are very happy. We are very flexible, accommodative understanding. But again, it's standard. If you are not really up to the task, we just ask you to live in kind. You can remain our family, but out of uh, service at least. That's uh, very, uh, very, very clear, I guess. Now, um, benefits of 12 volunteers. Access to all our high level uh, webinars. I told you we host top African leaders, uh, top businessmen in top civil society, academics, influential people in African court or the African court. So you access all those webinars and connect with also young leaders. It's also not about the high level people, but also connecting with other young leaders, you know, networking, the strategic connection, you know, platform. We are here, we are all from different countries. What a pleasure, like an evening, you meet the whole of Africa. You know, don't take it for granted. Connect with those people. Mm -hmm. Connect with those people, and uh, you never know your your network equals to your net uh, your network. Uh, if you have poor friends, I don't think you become exceptional rich. Um, if you are rich friends, even if you are not rich, uh, ninety percent of the chances are you be rich. You know. If you work with diplomats, have a high network of diplomats, chances are that you end up in that cycle. Mm -hmm. But 
If you, you do the opposite, it's the same. So these are young people, talented, exceptional geniuses, and they have a mission to fulfill. So these are potential people. You can see yourself now, but in 10 years, five years from now, you'll be the guys calling shots on the African continent. So connect now, it will be a better place. Personal development and leadership, you've exposed to high network challenge, uh, connecting with high profile leaders, uh, but also challenging your ideological capacities, personal development, you know, skills on entrepreneurship, skills on leadership, if you want to be using, you know, platform to pour your passions, innovate, empower, is very key um, because this is where there is no one who will stop you when you have an idea to, to pour it out, to bring it up. So all your geniuses, or whether you're very good at, uh, at, uh, at anything, public speaking, writing, um, videography, architect, you know, entrepreneur, ever. This is a platform that you are meant um, to scale up your, your, your profile. You know, career growth will be having exceptional workshops purposely to boost um, your personal career goals and be inviting some speakers to speak to you um, on career choice and career development too social scaling your profile through our social media websites. So all of you guys, after a few a few hours from now, you guys I'm gonna task you to present your your profile, your, your short bio, your headshot profile picture. We post them on, on our website and also our social media to give you a welcome, but also to give you an outstanding viewership, you know at all our social media um, people and profile. So you never know who sees that profile on our website. Uh, I think if you have not searched on our website, you can go to our website and see certificate of service and excellence issued at the end of your tenure. So we'll give, we'll give certificates and that's it. Thank you very much. I welcome any other questions you have. Um, any questions? Uh, questions? Something you didn't understand? Something you didn't expect? It's your time now. Yeah? Yes, Noel. Thank you, Enoch. That was a very, very good presentation. Uh, well put, well understood. My question is on the services. You say there are leadership, entrepreneurship, peace building, and diplomacy. Mm -hmm. are, are those services purely on training, or how are those services executed? Because you spoke about training, and people get trained on those four. So are they services that? these African young people are offering to Africa or they are getting trained in those four areas. And if it is not just training, but these services are being offered, how are they being offered? Oh, okay, so um, my good question. So we, we are the one who train, they're not the young people who train themselves. We train them in those areas. It's African Reba that trains them. We look for speakers, facilitate the seminars and we train them. And, uh, and I think the other part of your question was, um, if you remind me, uh, how are they delivered? Is that the, the question? How are they delivered? Yes, the, yeah, yeah, the question is, how are they delivered? Yeah, training, training, both physical and online. Uh, but the biggest chunk, how we are able, the, the, the good thing with the physical or virtual world is you connect everyone easily without traveling, you know? So the biggest platform has been virtual, but we've had physical trainings in uh, physical trainings 
uh, in Burundi, in uh, in Rwanda, yeah, on the same, the same, the same, the same topics. So it's mainly virtual, because through virtual now I, you can access someone in Tunisia, Egypt, South Africa, uh, Botswana, in Nigeria, Ghana, easily once. But when you go to physical, you have to travel in that country, you know. To, so you limit you limit numbers and beneficiaries. So it has been mainly physical. I mean virtual. Sorry. Yeah. Enoch, just 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 one more. So the main core of African Rebirth is training, and it is training on leadership, entrepreneurship, is building and diplomacy. Like for now. Just, for, for now. now, that is the main. Core. Okay, so, oh, it's yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, William. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. It was really uh, clear, but I just want to ask on the part of the six month uh, tenure, and the summer position is the program that you are working towards to accomplish in that six months, or is it just a general that I will, will just hold positions and try whatever we can in that six months? <laughs> no, no, William. Uh, we, you can, like I said, because this is a volunteer thing, so you don't expect the volunteers to be permanent, you know? It's just uh, what I say, what should I call it? You don't expect the volunteers to be permanent. So you have to limit. Uh, it's not uh, our goals continue for years and years, you know? And I think it's Noah who said the main focus is training. It's beyond training, you know? It's a mindset shifting, a cultural exchange, a, a, a connector of young people, a platform, you know? And uh, sooner or later, we are going down to Namibia to have our first physical African continental uh, conference that will be. So it's it's beyond training when you look at it in a, in a bigger perspective, because training is like, okay, I come, you go, I come. It's not like that. It's intention, it's mentorship, you know? It's real mentorship. And the mentorship is many, it's in many ways forms and ways. So it's not like we have a project being accomplished in six months, then the project is over in six months. It's just keeping in mind that uh, you guys are volunteers. Uh, you also have other businesses to take care of. So you can continue after six months. Oh, I'm sure there are some who want to meet the expectations. I'm very sure about that. Uh, and uh, we say hello. I think you are not meeting your exact expectation. I think you you can be a member, but not on the committee. Uh, just before we move on, uh, no, I understand the part of volunteering and so on. And you spoke of one month probation and so on. And if uh, you did not uh, uh, perform well or so on, and then you can be removed. That is where my question lies now, that uh, is the certain uh, project which you are working towards to, or how much I really show myself in one month, if uh, maybe I'm not, uh, let me find oh, the yeah. but it's oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely we, you, you have, we're gonna give responsibilities, but if uh, something is supposed to be done in, uh, in a week, then you have taken a month without doing it, you know? Everyone will have a responsibility, uh, you know, to, to work on. So if you have not delivered on the actual responsibility you're supposed to do, that uh, becomes a sense of, uh, no, no, a basis to evalu for evaluation. Yeah, that's why like in a month you can really understand, okay, this, because these are not, um, how do I say, this is not technical, it's not rocket science. There are no more stuff. You coordinate, you you know, interact and in something. Uh, maybe if we're in a, like a tech company, one month is so little to, to, to know fully someone's potential. 
But according to what I, because I was interviewing everyone here, you're very smart people, you've done experiences. So there's nothing really uh, very new to uh, not expect or something. So in a month, really, if you have not, um, and by the way, this is what people don't understand. Performance is not really based on your abilities so much. It could be time that you're so much busy in other stuff that maybe you forgot that you won't have the time to perform. So it's not based on your incapabilities to perform. No, no, no. I'm sure everyone here is very capable of might doing mighty things. So it's not based on, oh, you're weak, you may be. No, it's based on the, the commitment you're putting in. Yeah. So in my month, if, we, if you are given um, something to do and you've not done it, then that's the basis. You understand now, William? Uh, yes, you made it clear now. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so, Noel, you still have a question? Yes, uh, two. Uh, still on, on the services being offered. Uh, kindly make me understand what is the end goal of African rebirth? Because <clears throat> when I look at the, the vision, a prosperous and a united Africa, if I'm not wrong, uh, and the services, there's leadership, entrepreneurship, peace building and diplomacy. So are you raising, are you raising African leaders who just after training, they go continue with their businesses. Oh, are you raising African leaders as African rebirth in that if Kenya today needed, uh, there's war in Kenya, God forbid, and it needed peace, peacekeepers, will African rebirth be ready to deploy peacekeepers to Kenya? <laughs> and if there's a table where they, a, a, a conversation, a diplomatic conversation needs to go on in Ethiopia, can African rebirth send a representative there? So my, my question is, what is the end goal? Are you training? Because one of the, one of the benefits of a volunteer is uh, networking. Yeah. So to, uh, to me, I'm like, you're training these people. For example, you're training a communication specialist in African Rebar. And that there's a conversation that needs to happen in Uganda. And you happen to know the ambassador or whatever to Uganda. Can that person be invited for that particular meeting or that particular conference just to articulate them, themselves or something? So my point is, apart from training, like, uh, what is the end goal of African rebirth? Like, where do you see African rebirth in three years? And where do you see these African young leaders who are trained by African rebirth in three years, in five years? Maybe make me understand a little bit of that. Okay, very good question. Where do I see what's the end goal of African rebirth? Okay, let's start from here. So we have been operating for one year and a half, right? And uh, when you say uh, sending peacekeepers and something like that, even the UN, when they started, they were not able to send peacekeepers. They started sending peacekeepers in 90s when they started in the 70s, you know? So progress by progress. One of the best thing, uh, uh, one of the things we're doing is raising consciousness, ideological shift, you know? Uh, I don't know what you become um, to, in 10 years from now or what, but maybe the seed of what you become, you picked it from African rebirth. You see what I mean? So it's, it's, it's not like, okay, we are growing and we are, we, are, we are forming to a peacekeeping and peacekeeping missions and wherever and God. But if we support uh, young people, you know, develop their business plans, uh, fund, help them, uh, you know, get seed funding capital, um, you draw the network of young people. If, uh, if someone is looking for employment, and through our network. That's why I told you it's beyond network because we connect strategically with these guys, um, mentorship. So if, if like, you, like you said, if in, in, I know a person who, or, or in, in need or anything, 
and there's an, a, a young staff who's an African rebirth member, you know, why you not uh, connect? Yeah. But also, let me challenge you on this. My goal is to bring light, but you must light it to yourself. You see what I mean? It's not, you know, you know, train for you, then do this. No, my goal is to raise consciousness. And when I raise a consciousness, it's up to you to put the things we do in, in practice, because these are practical things. If we are saying that uh, uh, enhancing prosperity, you cannot talk about African prosperity when yourself you're not prosperous. You see what I mean? It starts from you. So meaning improve your life first, you know, have the capacity and the means to improve lives. Then have, you have the capacity to improve the lives of your community, to improve the lives of, uh, of, uh, of a continent and the country. So these uh, steps, it's very hard for me, like, oh, I'm training a person, then I monitor what they become. Never. Even your parents cannot do that. They, can, you, they cannot monitor well, <laughs> what do you become. Whatever you become at the end is a personal choice. However, they provide environments where you nurture all your talents, all your, your skills, and all uh, your you know, your capacities to develop. When you go to school, the school doesn't tell you, okay, you must become this and this and this, you know? So if you, a, you are an alumni of your school, they give you the education, they give you the skills. So put those skills in, into play. Not all Harvard graduates are successful in life. Some are angling on the streets, but also, Imagine guys who don't go to these powerful universities but making it in life. So at the end of the day, it's a personal choice you choose to do. But our, our work as African Rebirth is to give you an environment of mindset shift, is to expose you to a network. Now, people, when they say network, they think, oh, big leaders, oh, big what? The people you are with right now, you don't know what they become. The big leaders are old. You don't know what William become in Namibia or yourself in Kenya become in 10 years to now. But if you have grown up those uh, connections and you know someone, it increases your chances to do that. So, but the end goal of African rebirth is to, like you said, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I am not, I'm not aiming at building peacekeeping missions. That is a failure for African rebirth if we build the peacekeeping missions. We are building a society or raising consciousness to young people and society that there is no need of peacekeeping because the idea of peacekeeping means there is no peace in the first place, you know? But you see what I mean? There is no peace. So it will be a failure to provide peacekeeping missions to, to, to Somalia or to, uh, to another country. So we're planting a seeds of uh, a mustard seed uh, where that there will be no conflict in the first place. But also giving you skills and uh, negotiating skills, diplomatic skills that you can thrive. So I will not promise you that, oh, I'll pick a phone call and call your diplomatic office and look for you a job you have the leader. leadership is not given it is earned so you you have if you have the skills the motivation and anything go to your embassies and when you speak with these skills maybe they see light in you you see what i mean do i answer your question so where you see that where do i see my uh, african rebirth in three years we have a, a 10-year plan it's not just beyond even three years or something. At the end of the day, we want to be at a negotiating table, uh, influencing policy. Uh, remember that however much you can be, be bigger, you can't be a head a state. You should keep that in mind. But we can influence the state through policy. You understand? We you can influence state through policy. So that's how I, um, but my aim is not to uh, really to 
kind of babysit you, you know, babysit people, young people, because look, people forget it's young people, but you're not really young. <laughs> you're not really young. You're not young. So my our work is to raise that consciousness, develop that ideology, because there is no powerful person as a person who has risen a consciousness. It can do anything, you know. Um, do I answer your question? Does it make sense to you? Or you yeah, want to? Mm -hmm. It does make sense. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, William. I like such question. Uh, no, yeah, just um, I wanted to make it a question, but I think I can make it a suggestion because you um, yeah. elaborated actually on it a bit. And uh, because uh, when I was thinking of like, we have a problem in Africa now with uh, Eswatini, yeah. the, situ the situation of Eswatini, the situation of Zimbabwe and Mozambique. So I confused the two, but there's something happening there. And uh, I had to ask now how African rebirth is um, able to, to bring up a discussion on that. But I my contribution is actually to say that um, like for now we, you can see we are volunteers of this position and this position. And I think uh, African rebirth, maybe if we can also like, if there's a discussion with maybe United Nations youth or African Union youth organization or whatsoever, mm -hmm. and to lobby in as that, okay, we have a speaker from African rebirth to actually partake in the discussion that is held by this organization or so on, so that we can also now, um, Upscale, uh, upscale our skills and uh, and so on, and also to now network in that form. Yes. If you if you understand the way I'm going. Of course, yes, I understand. Yeah, like, I totally understand what you're suggesting. Uh, but those things uh, reached um, they're strategic. They are not things that um, one day you jump into it. Um, it's uh, a lot of uh, work. And um, saying that it's a lot of work, it's a lot of, uh, when you see even the negotiating people that uh, there's, there's some youth in, uh, you said in Eswatini or something like that, um, problem somewhere. These are, most of them are actually ideological problems. They, now in Eswatini, Manana comes from Eswatini. Uh, the young people are saying they want a democracy, and they want uh, they want uh, they want they want uh, kingship because they're absolute monarchy. Now, what is really the crush? It's not about democracy or they wanting democracy. It's service. Those young people would shut up and keep quiet if they have access to employment, if they have access to. To, to uh, you know to the basic needs of their lives. So it's not a crush of uh, democracy or the kingship, you know and and of course the young people will say, ah we need democracy, we need democracy, we need democracy. But you don't live in the definition of democracy. What's the definition of democracy? It's the rule of a so-called majority, but it's not really the majority. it's the rule of the rich over the poor. No, you can't. Democracies are very expensive to maintain. If you are crying, the, the country doesn't give you uh, uh, the basic services. Now, politicians will give you hands out to vote for them, but they will not solve your real problem. So either the side of government or the side of young people, they have to sit at the negotiating table and say, look, we have to accept that we will not deliver to the best uh, resources that we have, even the little resources we have. And then and, and then the king uh, puts down the weapons and negotiate with these young people. But behind the scenes, what people don't see is that there is always a foreign hand in these scenarios. And I saw actually there that um, and I saw, you know, uh, people demonstrating around the American embassy. And so, so these are just wicked um, people. So the American embassy will give you democracy. 
it is it's a strict it's a strict indicator that oh there is some foreign interference in this. So so what we want to teach to young people, what we tell the young people is to be ideologically mature um, to, to, to such goals, to understand the trends of geopolitics, how uh, interest, geopolitics is, a, it's a cuts, it's, it's, it's carrots and sticks, you know? What I mean by carrots and sticks is they, the pure, pure interest to protect you. So because an American guy comes, tells you, oh, you need democracy, doesn't mean that they want to pass their interest. So when you when you sit down with those young people and say, why are you really demonstrating? I'm telling you, they will tell you they need democracy and freedom. But when you discuss, discuss the freedom you want, they don't know the context of freedom. So they are caught in between, you know, they are caught in between uh, the geopolitical interests and the conflicting realities of their country. So they are confused. And so when they take over, uh, they take over the king or the right and this a democracy, even a guy who replaces them does the same thing, you know, it so becomes a cycle, a cycle, and a cycle, and a cycle, and a cycle. You follow the trends of coups. Every guy who has taken a coup uh, says they need democracy, rule of the, of the people. Uh, that's number one. And two, there's massive corruption. Mm -hmm. So playing to the gallery of international uh, system, that the, when you raise uh, these are emotional stuff, when you raise uh, corruption, um, uh, human rights, you know, you know, another thing of human rights, abuse, you know. So these are things that young people should be um, should be cautious about, and they say, okay. We have these challenges in our country, but is the best way going on the street and demonstrating or engaging policymakers. But also I understand that even those rigid guys who are in power, they feel the guns protect them. So there is no coalition between, there is no bridge between. So the guys want to unleash their might and anger on the young people, and the young people also want to unleash the anger. So at the end of the day, the country collapses. But our aim and our goal is to raise such consciousness. That's why we involve di diplomacy. Like, oh, look, you have to be politically educated about your, the geopolitics, how politics play. And you think the, the young people in Zimbabwe or any other country just wake up that day? It is, it's an overnight thing. It's, uh, people spend sleepless nights planning those things. So the, what I call about consciousness is to understand all these games and, and raise leaders. I am not, we are, I, I, my real interest is not to raise uh, a community leader or what. My interest is raising national leaders, political leaders, business leaders who understand these games. And that when they're in the leadership, they are less attempted. They have the will and the humility to negotiate with the dissenting voices, but also maintaining or understanding the in and out of your politics. This is where we live. So saying that, uh, you know, going to African Union and, uh, you know, having a dissenting voice, it is a show, but the African Union says the same, give young people powers. They don't really maneuver the real thing, you know? Um, so, um, like you said, these are honest compositions people must have and come in. Yeah. Any other comment on that, please? William. Um, no, I'm fine for it. No, maybe I uh, uh, um, yeah. Young yeah, yeah, and they and they come with uh, with time. Uh, we just started uh, a, a year and a half, but strategically, we want to be strong uh, policy uh, policy makers, ground you know academic, uh, having institutions of diplomas that trains all that, and influence policy. You know, 
uh, at a, a strategic level, not only on African continent, but also at a national level. Yeah. Okay. So if there are no other questions or ideas, I think we can call it a day. And um, any, any other question? Also, no, well, yes. Not a question, really. You had said in the OOB of your presentation that everyone will get a letter of appointment. Yes, yes. But I, I, would, I, will appreci I would appreciate if mm -hmm. each and everyone's roles can be highlighted in the WhatsApp group so that Noel, as a director, I can know if well, if I need this kind of assistance, I need the communication specialist or the diplomatic person. So I wish all our roles can be highlighted in the in the in the WhatsApp group, so that as much as everyone is getting their personal letters, we can understand what each and uh, every one of us is doing. Thank you. Yes, you guys will highlight them by yourself. So you introduce yourselves in the in the group. Yeah, that's really very simple. Yeah. So at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I hope there is no any other question or anything. Uh, the end goal, or the, there is no ending goal anyway. It's a continuous goal, is to understand. This is like a mission. It's not an usual organization. It's strategic to raise a consciousness and understanding, you know, and, you know, the ins and outs of, uh, of your country or what. Um, Manana, you want to say anything because you're from a SWAT team? Manana? Anyway, she might be. Yeah, but my, 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 my point is, is, is that in the next 15, 20 years, because 20 years is not far from here, uh, 20, uh, 10, uh, African people are going to be uh, asking the same, um, I called it revisionist stuff. Are they going to be asking for more democracy? Are they going to be asking for more freedoms? They even don't know the freedom they're asking. Are they going to be asking for more? Or will be sitting on a geopolitical structure that is governance, will be asking for governance, will be asking for you know strategic things that impose our lives. And it starts from now, you know. So thank you very much, everyone. I promised one hour. It's exactly one hour now. So we'll send even the recording. We'll have it. Okay. So have a very good day and uh, we welcome you again at African Rebirth. I hope we'll have a fruitful time. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and a great evening. Yeah. All right. Thank you.